Welcome math students. In this video I'm going to show you how we would compare two fractions that have different denominators. And the reason why this is tough is, well it's kind of like two people running. If you let somebody have a head start and you want to find out who's the fastest person, it's kind of hard to figure out who is fastest if somebody has a head start. It's kind of the same thing with fractions. If they have different denominators it's really hard to tell if they're you know which which fractions larger or not so uh, this is the easy way to compare two fractions and then I'll show you a different way that would lead right into adding and subtracting fractions which I think is a lot more beneficial but if you're just trying to compare two fractions the quick and easy way this is the the fastest way what I do is you don't have to draw a line but I just draw a line to show that I'm gonna multiply so five times two and I usually draw an arrow like this to show which direction I'm multiplying because you'll need to know where they put the answer. So 5 times 2 is 10. And on this side I'm going to multiply 3 times 3. And I'll put the 9 above that 3. And that's how you can tell which fraction is larger. Is the 10 is above the 2 thirds. So 2 thirds is larger than 3 fifths. And that's the easy way. Okay, now if you want to compare fractions, what I call the more effective way is to actually find common denominators. And the reason why this is beneficial is because if you're comparing fractions, you're most likely going to be adding and subtracting fractions. And when you add and subtract fractions with different denominators, you're going to need to know this skill anyway. So. This is what I would normally do, is you would have to find a common denominator for 5 and 3, or simply what number, and I usually, doesn't have to be the smallest number, but it's easier if you do pick a smallest number. So, you know, we would call that the, the least common multiple. What is the least common multiple of 5 and 3? Now, could we use 45? Yes. Could we use 60? Yes. It's just going to make dividing and multiplying uh, a little bit harder for those that have a harder time with bigger numbers. So I usually try to have my students find the lowest common multiple, which would be 15. So 15 is going to be the common denominator now for these two new fractions. And then we'll be able to compare these two fractions and see which one's larger. So now, if you want to hit that link on how to do easy z, you can do that, and I'll sh the video shows you how to do easy z. But if I can show you real quick, this is how I do easy z. I would divide 5 into 15, which is 3. So always divide across. So 5 into 15 is 3. And then take that 3 and multiply it by this 3. And that would give you 9. So let me do that one more time. I divided 5 into 15 and got 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And that's why I call it the easy Z, because it kind of looks like a Z. And then I would do the same thing at the bottom. I would divide 3 into 15, which is 5. And 5 times 2 is 10. And now I can compare these fractions. I just look at the numerator, or the top number in each fraction. And 10 is bigger than 9, so 2 thirds is bigger than 3 fifths. And again, the nice thing about knowing how to compare fractions this way is now when you start to add and subtract fractions, like I'm ready to add now. So I hope that was helpful, and uh, good luck.